In this video, I'm going to discuss the oxalate markers on an organic acid test from Great Plains Laboratory. And since high oxalates are a risk factor for developing kidney stones, I'll also give five action steps you could take to lower oxalates. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand their test results so that they can find and remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. I need to let you know that this video is not meant to be used as medical advice or as a recommended treatment protocol, and it isn't a replacement for consulting with a competent healthcare practitioner. The organic acids test from Great Plains Laboratory offers a comprehensive metabolic snapshot of a patient's overall health. It provides an evaluation of intestinal yeast and bacteria, markers for vitamin and mineral levels, oxidative stress, neurotransmitter levels, indicators of detoxification, and is the only organic acids test to include markers for oxalates. So what are oxalates and why should you be concerned about them? Well, oxalates are small molecules that have the ability to form crystals, which in turn can deposit in different areas of the body. In fact, these oxalates can form just about anywhere in the body, and when they do, they can impair the function of the organ or gland. Some of the most common areas where they accumulate include the bones, blood vessels, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, retina, skin, and thyroid gland. Oxalates can also bind to heavy metals, such as mercury, and having higher levels of oxalates can result in a trapping of heavy metals inside of the body. In fact, according to Dr. William Shaw from Great Plains Laboratory, a reaction of oxalate with heavy metals such as mercury and lead can cause the precipitation of the heavy metal oxalate complex in the tissues, which in turn will increase the toxicity of these heavy metals by delaying their excretion. In other words, if you have high oxalates, then this can prevent you from effectively detoxifying heavy metals from your body. I'd now like to briefly discuss the relationship between oxalates and kidney stones. A kidney stone is a hard mass that is developed from crystals that separate from the urine within the urinary tract. They are formed in the kidneys and most will be produced and passed through the urinary tract without causing any symptoms. However, larger stones can cause problems, which is what happens when someone passes a stone. When someone develops a kidney stone, this usually is caused by high oxalates. This doesn't mean that everyone with high oxalates will develop kidney stones. But if someone tests positive for high oxalates, then they have a much greater chance of developing kidney stones when compared with someone who has low oxalates. And the advantage of testing is that if high oxalate levels are detected, you can take the necessary precautions to lower these oxalates. Of course, this is something you can do even if you choose not to do this type of testing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the oxalate markers on the organic acids test. So glyceric acid. This marker is usually elevated in genetic hyperoxaluria type 2. Normal values of glyceric acid rule out genetic causes of significant elevations of oxalic acid in the urine. Glycolic acid. This is extremely elevated in genetic hyperoxaluria type 1. Normal values of this marker rule out genetic causes of significant elevations of oxalic acid in urine. It's also worth mentioning that glycolic acid is high in fruits and vegetables. Oxalic acid. Elevations of this marker can be caused by eating foods high in oxalates, such as spinach, as well as other foods that I'll mention shortly. Elevated oxalic acid may be also associated with aspergillus, penicillin, and possibly candida. Antifreeze poisoning can also cause elevated levels of this marker, as well as genetic variations in the oxalate pathway. I want to mention that when I had an organic acid test done on myself in 2016, my glycolic levels were elevated at 159 and my oxalic levels were 168. Due to the high glycolic levels, I was concerned that I had genetic hyperoxaluria, but I reduced my consumption of high oxalate foods. And when I retested an organic acids test, my glycolic levels had decreased to 37 and my oxalic levels were 44. I bring this up just so those who have elevated glycolic levels don't automatically assume that they have a genetic cause of elevated oxalates. So here are my oxalate markers that I collected. Well, I collected a urine sample on August 16th of 2016. And you can see here the glycolic levels were 159 and the oxalic levels were 168. 
And then I recollected, I redid the test on June 26, 2018. Don't necessarily recommend waiting that long between doing a retest, but you can see the glycolic levels down to 37 and the oxalic levels are down to 44. As for what caused the elevated oxalate metabolites in my case, I'm pretty confident that it was due to eating high oxalate foods, especially spinach, because at the time, back when I did that first test, in August 2016, at that point in time and before then, I would add a lot of spinach to my smoothies. And I would add other high ox oxalate foods such as raspberries, blackberries. And I also would eat other foods such as sweet potatoes and dark chocolate. You're, you're not going to completely eliminate all of the oxalates from your diet. But the main change I made was to not add spinach to my smoothies, or at least not add as much spinach to my smoothies. And that, as you can see, had a dramatic effect when I did the retest. Before discussing the action steps to take if you have high oxalates, if you like this video so far, please do me a favor and click the like button below. If you have tested high for oxalates on an organic acids test, then I would recommend to take the following action steps. So step number one is to gradually make the transition to a low oxalate diet. And as I mentioned earlier, you're not going to eliminate all the high oxalate foods, but you want to minimize your consumption of high oxalate foods. And some of the foods high in oxalates include spinach, soy, nuts, beets, Swiss chard, sweet potatoes, as well as raspberries and blackberries. So step number two, if you tested high for toxic molds or candida or both of these, then of course you want to address this. And the reason is because toxic mold and candida can manufacture oxalates. Step number three is to consider supplementing with vitamin B6. And the reason for this is because a vitamin B6 deficiency can sometimes be a cause of high oxalates. Step number four is to take calcium and magnesium citrate when consuming foods higher in oxalates, while of course gradually making the transition to a lower oxalate diet. The research shows that citrate inhibits the formation and growth of calcium crystals. And since approximately 80% of stones are calcium based, it might seem counterproductive to take calcium, but supplementing with calcium can actually inhibit the intestinal absorption of oxalates. If you choose to take a calcium supplement for high oxalates, 200 to 400 milligrams of calcium citrate would be a good option. Taking an equivalent amount of magnesium citrate also can be beneficial. Step number five is to consider taking high dose probiotics. A few studies mention that taking high dose probiotics can help with high oxalates by reducing gastrointestinal oxalate absorption, and this in turn can decrease the risk of kidney stone formation as well as other conditions related to high oxalate levels. If you have any questions about oxalates, please post them in the comments below. And because mold can lead to high oxalates, you probably will want to check out my video where I discuss the mold markers on the organic acid test from Great Plains Laboratory. And in this video, I also give some treatment suggestions for those who have toxic mold.